expecting to make a video today, but I just had a really crazy encounter with Jesus and I really want to share it because I don't want to forget any of the details. So I've just been kind of, I woke up this morning, I had weird dreams last night. Um, the first thing that the Holy Spirit told me as soon as I woke up was to go take a walk. Um, so I've been trying to be better about listening and being obedient and taking care of my body because he's been speaking to me about that. So I left the house to, well, I had a conversation with my husband first before I left and, you know, it's about some pretty serious stuff, but, um, Yuki fly. Um, but it was a good conversation, you know, just, um, kind of corrective and, and loving, but just, you know, some, about some changes that we have to make about being more intentional about our family and, and our house. And, and it was good. Um, so I leave to go walk and I get, to um, this first little hill on my street. And um, I go into a vision and I see Jesus. And he's walking in front of me in a, in a, in a robe that's white. And um, I'm praying in tongues this whole time. He told me to pray in tongues in the spirit the whole, whole walk. And so I am, and, and I see Jesus, and I get this urge in my spirit to, to start to run. Now, let me tell you guys, I'm not a runner. I am not an exercise junkie. I do not like to sweat or to exert myself. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to be obedient. And um, I had this urge to run and I like, so I, I wiped my eyes and I'm like, uh, am I, is that really what I'm seeing? Jesus, is that you? And I looked again and lo and behold, it's Jesus. And um, I got this sense of urgency that he was leaving me behind. <laughs> And I, I got afraid and I didn't like the space that was between us. <laughs> and so as much as I hate to run, I started to jog. And, um, you know, this road, it's like full of hills and stuff. So it's not exactly one that's easy to run on, but you know, I'm, praying in tongues and I'm calling out for Jesus and I I can't catch up with him and um and I got this sense of urgency like he's leaving me behind <laughs> like he's leaving me behind like like I was a little kid and you know when and I was watching my dad, like, get in a car and leave me somewhere and knowing that he wasn't going to come back. <laughs> and so I started running for, further and faster. <laughs> and, I, and I'm crying. I'm like, I'm crying like this. It's like I'm running towards Jesus. <laughs> and I'm... And I know that my, my soul and my spirit is crying out, don't leave me behind. Don't leave me behind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the space I let get between us. Don't leave me behind. And so I just ran, crying out to Jesus about this stuff. And um, finally, like, I reached this point of hill where I'm able to catch up to him. And he finally turns and he looks at me because he hadn't turned his head the whole time that I was running after him. And, and he held my hand. He said, come and walk beside me. And so I held his hand and he said, 
My heart is that not one would be left behind. <laughs> many on that day that cried, Lord, Lord, <laughs> I'll turn my face from them as if I never knew them. <laughs> and I, I said, I said, Lord, <laughs> but if, but if those ones are the ones that don't love you. <laughs> and he said, he said, in the hearts of man, I've placed a hole where my love belongs. And that the only difference between those who already love me and those who don't love me yet is that the ones who don't love me yet don't know that I'm the love of their life. <laughs> and that they're the love of mine. He said that he's coming back. He's coming back and it's sooner than we think. <laughs> and you know, like as I'm running, as I was running, I was thinking about like all the little petty problems that we have going on in our lives right now and how, you know, we can get so easily like tripped up on petty offenses and on political agendas and <laughs> And, you know, this person hurt my feeling, and this person hurt my feeling, and, and this person's wrong, and, and this and that and the other, and me, 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 and I, 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 and, you know, and, and the, the truth of the matter is, is that when I saw Jesus ahead of me, and he was leaving me behind, and I wasn't close to him, none of those things mattered. None of those things mattered. I didn't care about what my husband said to me two hours earlier that hurt my feelings. I didn't, I didn't care about how much money was in my bank accounts. I didn't care because the only thing that mattered was Jesus. And me getting closer to him. And, and I... Man, I'm just like, if anything, this is a word for, for all the people out there. Whether you know Jesus or you don't know Jesus, he's coming. He's coming. And it's sooner than we think. And we have got to change our minds. We've got to get away from all the petty distractions and the cares of this life because they're all corruptible they're all gonna fade you know when the if the world burns up tomorrow it's not gonna matter it's not gonna matter at all it's not gonna matter and your house is not gonna matter your freshly mowed yard is not gonna matter okay like that that petty offense that you keep between your brother or your sister to keep from, from exposing yourself to, you know, pain or rejection or whatever. It's not going to matter. What's going to matter is going to be whether or not you know Jesus and whether or not you're close to him and whether or not your family knows Jesus and whether or not they're close to him and whether or not your friends know Jesus and if they're close to him because he's eternal he's the only thing that's gonna live he's it's in him that we have eternal life and when all of this blows away in his dust when your life is over he's the only thing that remains and i am scared right now i am scared for the body of christ and where we're at i am scared for the world at large jesus is coming and I don't want to be left behind. So I repent, God, I repent. I ask that you forgive me. God, I ask that you forgive the church. I ask that you forgive your bride, God, for not being prepared, for allowing the cares of this life and, and comfort and, and our opinions and our self-righteousness and our pride and our egos to rise above the preeminence of who you are. I ask that you forgive us, God. <laughs> Purify your bride. 
Don't leave us behind. Don't leave us behind and baptize us in a love and a holy, all-consuming fire that makes us want to desire with all fervency and fear and honor and respect of the Lord to lay aside every idol, worthless thing to run towards you and your high calling. <laughs> It's got to change, guys. It's got to change. <sighs> like, I'm like, I never let me, I'm a hairdresser. I, I never let anybody see me without makeup on. I don't ever let anybody see me ugly crying. <laughs> this is about as humble as I can get to the world. I need you to share this video. <laughs> I need you to share this video. I need you to make this go viral. Because it is a warning. It is a warning to the church. It's a warning to the world. He's coming again soon. And we have to be ready. You don't want to be left behind. When he comes back, you want to be caught up by his side. You want to be in his confidences. You want to be wrapped up in him. Because on that day, I'm telling you, on that day, I'm telling you, <laughs> we got to get our focus right. We got to get our, our priorities straight. Oh, Jesus, help us. Oh, Jesus, help us. <sighs> I have to go now. <laughs> Please listen. Please listen.